<laughs> okay, I think we're on. Fantastic. Okay, happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, good to be with you. Good to see you all here. Uh, it's beautiful outside. I'm excited. Uh, uh, I'm going to go hang out. Uh, I'm excited to go outside and play in the snow. Um, well, so here we are. Uh, it's the first of our five-week series about living out our faith. Um, an outreach uh, that's how we're interpreting this. This is uh, so we are going to be hearing from, um, you know, the the wisdom, our leaders uh, who are down in the trenches, week in and week out, doing the good work. Um, yeah, I think over the course of certainly today, but over the course of, of the next five weeks, uh, I really want you, if you come away with just a few things. One, we're, you know, there's wonderful things happening, uh, but also I really want you to hear the invitation uh, that there is opportunity and space for you all and everybody at home uh, to participate um, in the good work that's happening. Uh, there's, there's ways to uh, volunteer and uh, to, to serve others. Um, so, so I'm joined here uh, by two wonderful people on my right. Uh, Allison Hastings, who leads us through our uh, uh, feeding ministry at St. John's in Norristown. Uh, she'll uh, speak to this. And, and on my left, I'm joined uh, by Ned Miller, uh, who has uh, led us uh, quite faithfully through our uh, partnership at St. Mary's uh, in the feeding and, and, and many of the other projects that have happened there. Um, yeah, so I, you know, kick back. This is going to be wonderful. Um, I'm going to turn over to Allison. Thank you. You okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, so prepared. Um, <laughs> I'm going to sit down. <laughs> St. John's is a soup kitchen that we is run out of a, a uh, church in Norristown, which is now the home of the diocese. So it's a very beautiful old historic church, but it no longer really has a congregation. And we serve on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and Saturdays they get breakfast, and on Sunday, St. Augustine of Hippo, which used to be called Hip Hop Hippo, which was our youth feeding ministry, runs out of the church, um, runs, runs out of the kitchen because they can no longer do it out of St. Augustine's. Um, we feed currently between 100 and 110 people each feeding. It's gone up and down during COVID because when we had um, an influx of relief money. People didn't tend to come um, as often, but now that that is over and also rent forgiveness is over, we've seen our numbers spike. Um, we are not feeding in person at the moment. We are giving a to-go meal because they can't be distanced enough in the dining room, and we can't do it in shifts because who, do, you know, it's, it's not a, um, we serve a very vulnerable population. We serve a lot of people who are mentally unstable. We serve a lot of addicts. Um, it's not a population where they can understand about waiting turns, so it's not like we can do it in shifts. That wouldn't that would spark a fight. So we ser we serve at the door and give them a bag of very substantial lunch um, to take with them. And I don't know where they go to eat it. It makes us kind of sad right now that they don't have the fellowship of each other and a warm place to eat their lunch. But it's we're doing the best we can in these kind of crazy times. So that's sort of the synopsis. Thank you. Uh, can I just jump in? Sure. I, I have to say that, uh, come back over here for the cameras, um, that uh, um, St. John's is, has been uh, one of the, the primary ways through uh, COVID that uh, we've been able to, you know, when, when most things shut down, uh, when most people went inside, St. John's has, has kept their doors open, and, and it's really... Um, the, the work that's being done is, is really fantastic and, and, you know, preaching the gospel, doing the good work. Um, I, I mentioned in, in, in my sermon that, uh, you know, the confirmation class has made some uh, casseroles. Um, and so, you know, I know that I'm surrounded by, yes, please. Here, can I, can I bring this to you? Well, just so that we can hear. And then the folks at home. I did it. Uh I don't know. Yep. Can, am I on? Yep, you're on. I did it for years, and now I'm too old. But I need to tell you that I wish you would change some of the food. I, I frankly, I'm kind of tired of making that casserole. <laughs> we did. We, we had recently changed the the food. We we yeah. 
We you have a new casserole? Yes, it's a chicken and noodle casserole. The recipe's been on the oh, website for about a year. Thank you. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say yeah. about that. <laughs> Next week, it's barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you this one. Thanks. Yeah, but help me. Do you, you know? told I can't hear you. Are we on? Yep. Yep. It would help me to know which casseroles are needed and when. Um, because every now and then, Frank will make an announcement saying, we need casseroles. And so then I make them. So, uh, th But to have it on the website so we could just say, we need this and have a date? It's or is that not possible? really, that's not, a pos that's not possible. Because it's an in the moment sort of a thing. We have spikes and dips in our feeding. So we don't know, like we, when we need casseroles, we have enough for the next couple of feedings. So we're asking, it's not like an emergent need, like if we don't get it for the following week, we won't be able to feed them. So when we make the call, we have only so much freezer space downstairs. We, have only, we only have so much bandwidth to hold it. So when we make specific asks, it's because we need specific things. Um, you can make anything at any time, as long as there's room in the, the freezer to take them. Like, you, you don't have to wait for us to ask you. It's, there's always a need, um, but it's not something that can be done in real time. It's not, uh, it's not as simple as like stocking a grocery store shelf. We see spikes and dips in our need, and so we bring our food um, in, in um, reaction to that. So we, we do need things here and there, but, it, but the reason that we, we ask for them sometimes is because we know that we're down to our last 12 casseroles. So we'll be able to serve for the next two times, but we won't after that. And that's, it's really the only way that we can do this. I mean, it could, we could maybe put it on the website, but the, the broader reach often leads, like for example, the confirmation class made a whole bunch of casseroles. They made the wrong one. <laughs> so right now we're storing about 60 casseroles that we can't use until this summer. Um, so we don't have a lot of freezer space. It's the, the freezer space is finite. So you know we, we kind of have to make our, our calls yeah. as as we need them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, can I, if I can add, um, on the website there are the recipes. The recipes are there. Yeah. I mean, it, but oh. it doesn't say we need soup or we need casseroles. We need everything all the time. If we need the stuff in the summer when it's summertime, we need the stuff in the winter when it's winter time. We just. Um, but there's not. If you feel like making a casserole, make a casserole. Yeah. If you don't, you know, if, but if there's, a, if there's a specific need, that's when we make the specific ask. People don't go to the website as often as you probably think they do, which is why we do the um, announcements in church yeah. when, we, when we run out of stuff. <laughs> if we do an announcement in church, um, I can't remember, but does Frank or whoever makes the announcement say the specific type yes. that is needed? Yes, we need And then soup. maybe we could back that up in the bulletin also. Of course, with... and, the, and it is. It, off, it is actually often in all those okay. places. That, good, yeah. that's, that's all I wanted. Yep. And, um, and, a, and a brief follow-up. Um, uh, wait a second. <laughs> yes. Um, Right now, you're doing the bag lunches. We are. So, so the confirmands, and then I think maybe the women's group. The women's group made the right casserole. <laughs> yeah. That's so. So it, on the website, if you look, it says we used to switch it back and forth. So we would put like the the fall menu up, and then the and then the summer menu up. And right now, all of the casseroles are up there. So when the confirmands got the information to make the casserole, the wrong recipe was attached. So they made a casserole, which is not a casserole, it's a summer salad. And in the winter we try to serve something warm because it's cold out. So um, I don't make summer salads in the winter. So we have a whole bunch of that stuff that we'll just have to hold on to. Yep. I'm wondering if it would be possible to just have a, uh, like a, not maybe a detailed inventory, but just a freezer capacity barometer or something like okay it, we have zero not, capacity I, I mean I, in, in a perfect world like all these things are possible but like there's only so much bandwidth for the volunteers and the people that are in the kitchen and sometimes yeah. stuff gets in our freezers that don't belong to us and it would really mean like a day-to-day -day, me going in and checking that's not going to happen so we do we do the best we can do with the time and the and the volunteers that we have yeah um maybe thank you thank you absolutely um we've got a yes please I just wanted to know where I wanted to know where on the website it's listed as to um, I didn't know that you, you just said Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. 
Where is that all listed with the time frames of when the volunteers need to be there and where? It is not because St. David's, so the soup kitchen itself is open all of those days. St. David's serves on the first, the fourth, and the fifth Wednesdays. Those are our days and other churches and other organizations take um, part other days and because it's a sort of a tricky situation if you want to volunteer you can email me directly and I have an email that I send out to people that are interested and then they sign up for slots um, we because we are serving to go right now our, we don't need as many people as we do when we are in person we need about 10 when we're in person we need about six when we're doing the to-go there's such a thing as too many cooks in the kitchen uh -huh. so we try to kind of keep um, control of the volunteers and who shows up so people aren't wasting their time and for me, um, it's I can't have like everybody new on a certain Wednesday because then I can't do what I need to do. I have to train everyone. So we try to keep it so there's some seasoned people, there, there are new ones coming on board, and the seasoned people can train the new people just so it's not like every week it's a new adventure, which is why it's not kind of an open sign up because there is some, I, it's not, there's not skill. It's just, you know, knowing what you need to know. I mean, it's a tight space. We're just, we're, we're, so that's, that's kind of how that works. Yep. On the uh, delivery side, um, is there a, a spiritual message or an opportunity to minister to the folks that are um, being fed? We actually have two priests that are with us every feed. No, one or the other is with us every feeding. So the spiritual part is not handled by the, um, it's not handled by us. It's handled by the priests that are there. And do you have examples of what? what's done or do you know what they do um they have a mass or they have a service or they used to have more COVID has really affected a lot of this but they also have counseling i mean we are not part we use saint john's as our space but we are not affiliated the soup kitchen itself is not affiliated with the episcopal church we are it used to be it's a very complicated situation it was um run out of saint john's when saint john's was a parish and it was a parishioner there that started it all lovely situation then the church kind of went into decline and they had to separate because it closed it wasn't a functioning parish um so that is sort of beyond my pay grade it's not because it's not part of our responsibility but it, they they are the the community is definitely cared for we've got lists of um services that they can utilize that the priests are always there for them there's a director who is there every single feeding he's in a, he's in the, an office and he has relationships with a lot of these people and it was much 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 simpler before covid because we'd actually see them and we know them like we know these people's situations we know what's going on it's a little more difficult when it's at the door and it's masked i mean there's a lot of new people we don't know them because we don't sit down with them we don't know their situation but yeah that's not that's beyond our scope so I know it's easy to get caught up in all the logistical things, but what I also know is that this is a really powerful ministry. It's it one is. that our teenagers have taken some leadership in and do together. Um, as a staff, we've gone. The joke is that Maurice for weeks will say, who's coming, who's coming? But when we get there, it is an amazingly wonderful experience. So I'm wondering if there's just some stories that stick out in your mind of something that would just paint a picture for all of us who maybe haven't been oh, sure. to the kitchen. It would be great to hear something like that. So we have, um, and this is, this is an earlier, this is much earlier, because obviously we're not seeing our friends at this point, but we had a man that would come in. He never said a word. He never said one word. He would go through the line. He was obviously having a hard time. He would finish his lunch and he would go over to the piano and he would start to play. And he was an unbelievably, incredibly talented musician. And the room would just fill with music and everyone would get into it. Some of them didn't like when he was playing, would ask for a different song. But um, it was, it's that kind of thing where you, like you, you see this humble package and you don't expect this amazing gift from this guy. And he just sat at the piano and, and entertained us all. And it was really one of my favorite parts. It was, I, um, the piano, we, we stopped being able to use it. I don't know if it was broken. There was just a sign on it one day and they weren't allowed to play it. So we, could, we couldn't let him do that. But it was that part. I, I remember the, the, the room filling with music and it was just so joyful and such a, um, a nice thing for all of these folks that sort of didn't have a lot to do in their day. And this entertainment was unexpected and wonderful. And I'm, you know, you could almost see it. It was almost like you could see this sort of like rainbow of happiness just floating out of everybody. And that was, that was a very good day. We've had, um, we do have some 
spirited characters uh, with, a, with a lot of interesting backstory and um, getting them to talk, and some of them do and some of them don't, is a, is a really wonderful, wonderful thing because, you know, one, this one guy grew up out in Berwyn and he used to like to come in and tell us about all the famous people that ever lived in Berwyn and, you know, he was probably on the spectrum because you could tell there was this, like, incredible intelligence but he could barely tell you what he wanted to eat, like, it was, it was one of those sort of things. But there have been a lot of just beautiful souls that have come through that door and our people are, um, so Ned probably serves a different population that can sort of maybe help themselves a little more. Our people can't. Most of them are living in places that don't have kitchens, so they can't cook for themselves. They don't, they're in shelters. They're in, um, like, not whatever the right term for a halfway house is. Like, they don't have access to a kitchen and prep, and prep things, and they can't cook for themselves. So, like, when we're feeding them, we are really filling a need and you can it warms them it, it strengthens them and you can actually see that happening I mean we haven't been able to see that in a while because of COVID but before it was one of the most it's really very beautiful um, I think so in my tradition like my own family I, we are we're feeders like I like to feed people if you've ever come to my house it's like abundant I make pies like there's just I like to feed people I don't necessarily like to eat what I cook, but I love to watch you eat it. Like, it's one of those really wonderful things for me. And so this is, um, it's a, it's a very fulfilling. I love to see people enjoy their food. And this is, it's, it's really nice. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't know you've got a lot of pies at home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to feed people here in a long time. <laughs> yep. Um, this is, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, here are the invitation. There are, are uh, opportunities uh, to to cook and um, and soon to be more to to do more in person. Um, so thank you very much for your leadership and uh, your guidance here. Uh, we're going to switch and turn over to uh, Ned Miller. Um, let's uh, get your mic right. Um, wonderful. Okay, you can just fiddle with that as it comes. Um, yeah, talk, uh, I'll just turn it over to you. Say what you will. Thanks, Maurice. And thanks, Allison. That was a, a wonderful overview of what's going on. I want to repeat a couple things you said. There's always a need. There's a need in places like Norristown. But if you look at all the feeding ministries that St. David's is involved with, it's all over. It's in Wayne. It's in Ardmore. It's in Norristown for sure. I don't know... Um, whether people here have been involved in any of the food banks, the Chester County Food Bank. We're going to talk about Chester, PA. The Chester County Food Bank estimates that about 57% of the people who need food, they're food insecure, do not qualify for public assistance. It's a startling, it's sort of horrifying uh, statistic. In this broader area, the Philadelphia uh, metropolitan region, the estimate is about 30% of children are food insecure. 30%. That's a number that, in some respects, was aided by some of the things that uh, have gone on that Allison alluded to. Uh, the child tax uh, benefit, the, the credit actually came through for people, cash, the stimulus payments helped people, and began to alleviate some of the hunger and the, the real serious problems that exist in our metropolitan area. Chester, just a show of hands, who, who's been in Chester? Okay, almost everybody. If you haven't, it's an interesting place. When I first started going there, because I was invited by a wonderful parishioner, a woman named Beth Chance, about 25 years ago, and she asked whether I'd be willing to take some food down, and I said, I couldn't say no to Beth Chance. Uh, but I started uh, and learned that when I first went there, it was a food desert. And that's a term that I had never been exposed to. Food deserts uh, are essentially places that don't have supermarkets or places that provide fresh food, fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, there are a lot of food pantries, and there were at that time in, in Chester. Uh, Chester's no longer a, a food desert, technically. Uh, Camden is, for what it's worth, it's one of the ten major ones in this country. Uh, but part of the reason is because there was a, a supermarket that was open with the support of Phil Abundance, which is the sort of the, the catch-all supporter of food initiatives in this area. Uh, through this time frame, uh, the food pantry, which has been up and running since the early 80s, has been supported by St. David's and by other churches in the area. 
Uh, our support goes beyond supporting the food pantry. Uh, this church has stepped up on various occasions to help with various problems that the church has faced, most recently helping deal with flooding in their undercroft, which as you can imagine is a problem if you're trying to run a food pantry out of a, a flooded space. Uh, we've been very generous, but we need continuing help. We need volunteers. Uh, I'll, I'll go into that in a, in a minute. Uh, we need donations, both uh, uh, canned goods, which is on the website, but it's basically not the stuff that's in your Aunt Maud's pantry that you're trying to get rid of. It's uh, good stuff, uh, things that would include uh, tuna and peanut butter and pasta and the like. Uh, but what we really have seen over the pandemic, and this is a, a, a nationwide phenomenon, food banks like Phil Abundance, Chester County Food Bank have been stressed because some of the traditional sources of food, for example, the supermarkets, have not been able to contribute to them. So they're also contending with rising prices, so they have to buy more things. So cash donations uh, are definitely in need. And cash donations go a long way. Uh, St. Mary's historically uh, would rely on donations of canned goods, but also things that come from the government, uh, a variety of things that come in bulk. Uh, the, the government uh, has not been a totally reliable partner over the last two decades, but it did step up in the last 18 months. There's been a lot more there. Uh, one of the things that St. Mary's uh, has done uh, in the last uh, four months, really, is more outreach uh, to seniors in Chester. Uh, and it's a, a rather remarkable thing that they've started to do, which is deliver bags of food, not to assisted living facilities, but to seniors in the apartment complexes that have uh, sprouted up in Chester. And on a given week, they're either donating 40 or 80 bags, which are going to individual seniors in these uh, uh, units. But to do that, and, and again, this is an evolution in their thinking, they're trying to provide more fresh vegetables, protein, uh, fruit, and they have to buy that. We're estimating that each of those bags costs roughly eight to ten dollars. So this is this is real money, which is why cash donations, like the ones that our outreach commission has uh, afforded historically, have been very important. Um, but I would encourage you, if you if you have any interest in uh, in the ministry, we have a need. Uh, part of what they've started to do through the delivery process is create opportunities for us to uh, uh, ferry stuff around. There's need to help. Uh, on the days, it's Thursdays, that the, between uh, 12.30 and 2, that people are actually in line to receive the bags. Uh, COVID has uh, uh, led to some changes in how that's done. The individuals who come now don't necessarily go through the basement. They're, they provide a list. They're provided with a list of things that might be available, and, and we uh, fill that. But if, uh, if anybody has any interest, I'd be happy to, uh, to talk further with you. It's a great ministry. We have a number of people that are involved, but we can always use more talent. Uh, we originally uh, committed to one Thursday a month where we, uh, St. David's would be there because there are other churches there. But because of this additional work that's come about, because of the bags that are being delivered, uh, we're trying to find people that might be able to go more than one, find uh, uh, people who might be willing to go on other Thursdays. So if you have any interest in it, I'd be happy to talk, but uh, uh, again, I'd encourage you because the need is there. And it unfortunately, will probably always be there in our lifetime. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, thoughts, uh, reflections, um, you know, painting the picture that, yeah, we're feeding people, but it, it you know, it looks different depending on where we're at and, and, and the communities that we're serving. Um, yeah. I, um, Thursdays 12 to 2, perhaps Wednesdays from like 4 a.m. to... It's because it's only lunch and <laughs> we were able to get everything done because we bring it here um, already cooked. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's prepared, but we, we heat it up down there. But we're not actually cooking anything. We're wrapping up rolls, we're making up bags, we're doing things like that, and we're heating up the food and then portioning it out into to-go containers, which is um, not as hard as starting a meal from scratch. Truly. Yeah. 
But one thing, one plug I would like to make, if you do make the casserole, please follow the recipe. <laughs> what we are finding sometimes when we open up the lid is that people have taken like their last night's broccoli and cauliflower and dumped it into the noodles and the sauce. And while that, I know in people's minds, they're like, they're making it extra nutritious and I appreciate that thought. But we are not, we are feeding people because they are very hungry. They're also a little bit picky, which is odd. Um, something like broccoli pervades a casserole and the whole thing tastes like broccoli. So if you don't like that, you don't want to eat that. And we have a lot of people that do not want to eat that. Um, don't put lima beans in things if lima beans aren't called for. Again, like you might like them, but most people don't. So it's really important to follow the recipe. Lovely, thank you. Yep. I am indifferent about lima beans, I don't know. I know, but, but you'd be surprised how many of our friends in Norristown are not. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Uh, please. It sounds like a lot of these uh, feeding ministries rely on the folks to come to a location. Do you have any um, uh, delivery uh, ministries like Meals on Wheels or um, opportunities to feed folks that can't get out of their, their living situation or their home? Meals on Wheels, uh, at least in this immediate area, uh, is delivered through a number of different groups. Uh, I was surprised to learn that there's not this, you know, sort of overarching Meals on Wheels. It's very balkanized. Uh, but I know Surrey Services in uh, right down the street is uh, is one of the organizations that delivers Meals on Wheels through Devon, Berwyn. Uh, it is interesting, again, uh, hunger is close to home. Uh, Surrey Services, um, which deals primarily with senior citizens, on any given day is delivering 20 to 30 Meals on Wheels in this area. Uh, Trinity House, I believe is the name of the, is one of the Section 8 uh, housing uh, facilities that's right off Route 30 in Berwyn. It's about 20. Uh, so, but if you're interested in, you know, there are, there are groups that do that. I don't, I'm not aware of St. David's being involved in Meals on Wheels. We support them through our outreach grants, um, those kinds of feeding ministries, but we don't organize volunteers for that because they, ha they are under their own umbrella. They organize their own volunteers. But you can absolutely contact them. I'm sure they would love more drivers. And, and I, I think that to just tack on that, you know, wonderful work is happening, uh, but uh, there's always, uh, you know, the opportunity to create something new if, uh, if that's what uh, the Spirit is leading you to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to work with you if you want to plug into there or, or, or what have you. Um, okay. Well, the, the newest delivery was the seniors. Oh, the, the seniors um, through the St. Mary's food cupboard. You all are actually delivering bags of groceries now to, I, I think that's it's... That's correct. That's correct. I forget yeah, it's, it. 40 uh, to 80 bags. And Lizzie White was telling us yeah. in the outreach so, meeting. Yeah, so... That, uh, that started just about four months ago, and all the bags are packed at St. Mary's uh, and then delivered to, I think there are three different locations in Chester. Uh, I can attest to the fact that it's, uh, it's muscle work, so we need, uh, we need people who have some muscles, but, uh, but yes, absolutely. Okay. Maybe some final thoughts, questions? I, I, um, maybe I can speak for y'all, but y'all have fun doing this, right? <laughs> I, I think we so. We wouldn't do it more. Yeah, truly. <laughs> there, so are, I, there are days when it's more fun than others. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I, I think that I thank you both for your faithfulness and, and your leadership. As, um, yeah, this has been a trying time these last couple of years. And, and, but y'all have really held us down and, and created the opportunities for folks to, you know, who, who've been at home to uh, continue to think about others. Uh, you know, I was preaching about loving God and loving your neighbor. And, and so y'all really live that. Uh, so, so I thank you. Okay, uh, perhaps we can close with a prayer. If there's no final questions, there's nothing online. No, oh, I see. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, let us pray. Almighty God, uh, we give you all thanks and all praise for your presence in our lives. Uh, we, in your presence in this community, uh, your presence in each and every one of our hearts, and the way that you stir us to action. Uh, we pray that you wouldn't stop doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. Happy Sunday. Thank you kindly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.